please stand for the entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with your spirit. and let us prepare our hearts, beloved in Christ, in celebration of this Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray as we celebrate on this day the solemnity of the birth of John the Baptist. O God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. In the days of Josiah, the word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I said, Our oh Lord, look, I do not know how to speak. I am a child. But the Lord replied, Do not say I am a child. Go now to those to whom I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. It is the Lord who speaks. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, There, I am putting my words into your mouth. Look, today I am setting you over nations and over kingdoms, to tear up and to knock down to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Response, from my mother's womb, you have been my help. 
In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me, and save me. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. It is you, O oh Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. My lips will tell of your justice and day by day of your help. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth and I proclaim your wonders still. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. You did not see Jesus Christ, yet you love him. And still, without seeing him, you are already filled with joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. It was this salvation that the prophets were looking and searching so hard for. Their prophecies were about the grace which was to come to you. The spirit of Christ which was in them foretold the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would come after them. And they tried to find out at what time and in what circumstances all this was to be expected. It was revealed to them that the news they brought of all the things which have now been announced to you by those who preached to you the good news through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven was for you and not for themselves. Even the angels long to catch a glimpse of these things. The word of the Lord. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, preparing for the Lord a people fit for him. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to Lord. In the days of the time came for Elizabeth to have her child. And she gave birth to a son, and when her neighbors and relations heard that the Lord had shown her so great a kindness, they shared her joy. Now on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. They were going to call him Zachariah after his father. But his mother spoke up, no, she said, he's to be called John. They said to her, but no one in your family has that name, and made signs to his father to find out what he wanted him called. The father asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And they were all astonished. At that instant, his power of speech returned and he spoke and praised God. All their neighbors were filled with awe, and the whole affair was talked about throughout the hill country of Judea. All those who heard of it treasured it in their hearts. What will this child turn out to be? They wondered. And indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew up, and his spirit matured, and he lived out in the wilderness until the day he appeared openly to Israel. 
the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. One can almost imagine Elizabeth saying, no, he will be called John. You can imagine how, um, uh, how determined and aggressive and assertive she must have been. And that's what struck me in this gospel reading. Well, yesterday, beloved in Christ, the message of yesterday's uh, scripture readings, the message was enter through the narrow gate. And we share that the narrow gate is a choice, is a choice of position. And once you choose that position, once you choose that way of life, you then automatically reject another way of life. And once you choose a particular way of life, at least once you choose the way of Jesus Christ, it will lead to suffering. It will lead to rejection. So suffering and rejection occurs because it's an unpopular choice. It's going against the current. It's going against tradition. It's going against popular opinions. It's going against popular practice. And that's why Jesus considers it, considers it this gate, this choice, a narrow gate, because it entails suffering. So today, as we celebrate the solemnity of the birth of John the Baptist, we now listen to Elizabeth's em emphatic and aggressive no. And Zachariah's gently writing on the tablet, his name is John. Both of them, the parents of John the Baptist, have made a choice. They've made a choice. And they have chosen to go through the narrow gate. They both made a clear choice. They both made a clear choice, a narrow gate experience. Why? Because they are going against the traditional practice of naming the son after the father. They have made a choice. They have made a narrow gate choice. Because it makes no sense for the other family members for him to be called John. That's a choice. It's a narrow gate experience because their choice is disconnected from the religious and family tradition. It's a choice. And because they've made that choice, one can almost imagine both, the, both being rejected, scorned upon because they've moved away from the family tradition. But Elizabeth and Zachariah made a choice because this choice of theirs has been inspired by their relationship with God. It is in and through this relationship with God that the name of the Son is revealed. This choice is inspired by the revelation that of the mission of this, of this child. This choice has been made because they are being obedient to God. This choice is not a frivolous choice. It's not a fly-by-night choice. It's a choice that is grounded and deepened and, and, and inspired through their relationship with God. And so, beloved in Christ... The message for us today is that when you and I make a choice, when you and I make a narrow gate choice, it will give birth to something new in our lives. Only when we enter the narrow gate that we'll experience something new, something different in our lives. You know, many of us have been admiring the beautiful poe trees along if you if you walk or jog along lady chancellor road up that hill you see some magnificent yellow poe trees but i well, one day i was walking up there and i noticed that at least those poe trees that were along the road i noticed that the roots of those trees 
were penetrating narrow, very narrow stones, the holes in the stones, in the rocks of the hill. The, 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 the roots of the trees were going through those narrow, those narrow passages. And I thought to myself, this is what, this is a meaning. It's only when you and I go through the narrow gate like these roots that we will experience something as beautiful, something new as the Pui tree. Something new will be born in us. And that is why, that's what we see in the saints, in the lives of the saints. We honor the saints today like John the Baptist and all the saints because they made a choice to enter the narrow gate. And as they enter the narrow gate, something different, something new was born in their lives. For John the Baptist, he chose the narrow gate of, of, of life and ministry in the desert. And that gave new birth to persons coming to him to change their lives because they were converted. And so the challenge that I offer to you, beloved in Christ, as we celebrate today's solemnities. Do you wish to give birth to something new in your life? If you want to give birth to something new in your life, then the choice is choose the narrow gate. When we were growing up as children, there are two sayings that our parents used to rivet in our heads. One was, if you want something good, your nose have to run. Do you have that in Trinidad? If you want something good, your nose have to run. And the second saying they used to rivet in our, in our head is, um, it, it, it slipped me now, um, about sucking salt out of wooden spoon. You've got, if you want something good, you have to suck salt out of wooden spoon. What they were basically saying to us is that you've got to choose the narrow gate, you've, uh, the narrow gate of sacrifice in order for something new to be born in your lives. Nothing new will be born unless you make sacrifices. And that's what Elizabeth did and Zachariah did and that's what her, their son, John, did. Let us pray for the grace to choose the narrow gate. Amen. Amen. And so let us stand as we offer our petitions. Let us pray for our Holy Father Francis and all our pastoral leaders as they carry out their ministry of governing, sanctifying, and teaching, that they may do so bold and courageously as did, as did John the Baptist. Lord, hear us. And let us pray for ourselves who, have, who are participating in this Eucharist that the word of God may transform our hearts and our minds and in, in empower and inspire us to make difficult choices in our lives. Lord, hear us. We pray in a special way for Vanessa as she celebrates her birthday and also for Joan Kalus. We pray that their hearts may be filled with gratitude for the gift of life. Lord, hear us. And we pray for the safe return home of Suzette, Patrick, Scylla, and Marceline. Lord, hear us. And for all those who have died and gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially, especially Patricia Ross, Jean Dos Santos, and Anthony Chong. Lord, hear us. Good and merciful God, we thank you for listening attentively to these the prayers that we have offered to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the Lord's of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. In his per precursor, John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing, even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of our human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption, and to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme weakness by shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, at the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
sister, brother. At this time, you too are invited to receive Jesus. He says to you, come to me, for I am the bread of life. Come to me, you who thirst, and I will satisfy. For whatever reason, you are unable to be present, to receive Jesus in a sacramental way. But at this time, is your opportunity to receive Christ spiritually, to be in communion, to be one with your Lord and Savior. And so come to him. Here is invitation, and let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come to me, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, O Divine Savior, O Jesus, O Blessed Sacrament. Let us pray. Having feasted on the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce the good news by your lives. Amen.